What is good friends, I'm here to bring you Value vs Sidomas for Smoke on Snake Draft. There were so many Sun and Moon OU tournament games the last week that I recorded every single one of them live besides this one. Um, I was running between my computers making sure I get every game for you guys, so expect a lot more content over the next weeks. But yeah, this one I only got the replay. Um, I wanted to upload this because this is a stall team my man Ultra Balls made and I wanted to talk about the stall team, how it does in the meta game, like how it deals with certain threats. I wanted to do a video like that. And I got my chance now since, well, you loaded this up in a tournament game. He did put um, Bulo over Ferrothorn though, which, um, yeah, is a little, he makes the team a bit different. Obviously, Grassy Terrain helps everything besides um, Moltres to get extra recovery. But this, the problem I see with this is you have Grassy Terrain, which weakens Avalux Earthquake. Avalux can easily 2-hit KO Mega Maul with Earthquake, otherwise it does 54 to 64. And Marvel's play rough only does 32 to 38, so it's a great Marvel answer with Rocky Helmet. And I think Rocky Helmet is definitely better than. Uh, I assume he changed it to a Z move, probably Ground Z or I C, most likely Ground Z, because he has um, Grassy Terrain, which weakens his Earthquakes, and he cannot deal with Mega Marvel that well if Grassy Terrain is up. So I think he made it Ground Z. And yeah, I just like Rocky Helmet better on Avalok because. You can um, come in on Mega Pinsir, on Mega Morwall, also on Zygarde. Um, it's a secondary Zygarde answer outside of Clef. Clef does have, does have healable in case Zygarde has Toxic and Statuses, or if anything gets status. Basically, Helmet just means you don't sit there and do nothing, because you have to click Recover every time you come in on Morwall anyway. So why not have Helmet and chip them down at least, because you're gonna have to recover. So yeah, um, Avalak is also there to get rid of Hazards between Rapid Spin and Avalak. Um, Magic Bounce on Sableye and Defog on Moltres. Moltres also has pressure. It's pretty hard for the opponent to get rocks up. One problem for this is um, Mega Tita with rocks. Mega Tita kind of destroys builds like this. Um, but yeah, he has uh, Bulu instead of Pharaoh, which I guess if it's Protect Bulky Bulu, it can kind of check Tabulele. Not necessarily better than Pharaoh, so maybe a little bit better. But I'm not gonna get into that since Sidomas doesn't have a Lele here. But yeah, Moltres is there to come in on Heatran. Uh, it can easily tank Magma Storms, pressure makes it so Heatran only has uh, limited PP. It can defog on Heatran every day of the week, like it can just keep defogging. Uh, Heatran will run out of rocks if it keeps trying to get rocks up. And yeah, pretty much it can eat Z moves like Cockatoo Crash and like Z Magma Storm that would potentially break through Sableye. Moltres just eats them up with ease. The only thing Heatran can do to Moltres potentially is Toxic. I don't think it's Toxic turn on this team. I think it's DLC. There's a team that ABR made that Sidomas is using. I think it was made by... Like I said, ABR and it was used by AIM in World Cup is what I was trying to say. It's a really hard matchup, I think, for Sidomas. And yeah, the only change that I think well you also made... The other change that well you made is since he has... Um, he removed the rocker, which was Ferrothorn, he put Bulu, which means rocks have to be on this or this, probably on this. This Chansey was actually a softball, Seismic Toss, Confide and Toxic variant, if I'm not mistaken, on Ultra Balls team. Um, if you guys want to try Ultra Balls team, by the way, I'm going to put sample teams in the description, it's on sample teams. But yeah, since he probably put rocks on Chansey, he has to give up either Confide or Toxic. You want both moves on Chansey, I feel like, at the moment, unless you have a different mod to deal with Blacephalon. Confide is basically there because it lowers special attack. It deals with Karma and Subsea and Blacephalon, which can otherwise 6 over a team like this. It also helps versus Karma and Reuniclus. Yeah, it just helps in general versus Special Attackers, can also help versus a Karma and Tabu Lele. And then um, Toxic, I feel like, is also still important because, like, Chansey is a passive Mon. It wants that Toxic to work on Mons, like Mons like Torn, and you don't want them to come in for free on Chansey because it has Regen, so it doesn't care about Seismic Toss. But I assume he gave up Confide, um, since Toxic is really important on Chansey. I don't think he gave up Toxic. Uh, but yeah, well, he seems to be fine here since Sidomas does not ha have a Blacephalon. Yeah, this team is pretty much known. I think it's Bandit, Zygarde, Specs, Ash Ninja. SD Mega Morwell, the Coxco Crash Tran, AV Tang, and Rocky Helmet Defog Torn. So I feel like a t preview this is heavily in well used favor, but I'm still gonna um, bring you guys the match. And yeah, if I forgot anything, um, I will just talk about that as we go on because I don't want to take too long a team preview. So turn one, it's really obvious that Sidomas doesn't want to stay in here and let the Morwell take a flamethrower, obviously. Yeah, well, I was gonna say, there is a variant that. My man, you be made two variants. So flamethrowers, uh, roost, and defog is set in stone on this Moltres. But the last move can change. Um, sometimes it's um, substitute because sub is there to just always sub on Tita, make it easy to not get pursuit trap by Banta. You can just sub up um, to scout what they lock into. And the other variant is HP ground, which HP ground is um, better to deal with Heatran because if you don't have HP ground, you just sub up versus Heatran. 
and you can't really touch Heatran. Like you can PP stall Heatran, but you can't touch it. So HP Run can definitely help beat Heatran easier. That's just what I wanted to say. But yeah, well use play here is either um well if he's it's really obvious that Seamus is not gonna stay in, so I don't think he wants to flamethrower into the trend. I think he, he can either just like yeah, he's not flamethrowing into the trend. Like I guess he can try to make a play here that covers the trend, which um, would be like doubling out, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, he does double into Sable, I predict in the trend. Now, I think he just magas and protects um, just to scout in general. Now, he can just protect again to see what the Squininja is. Uh, I mean, it's obvious that it's most likely Ash, but in case he must change it to Protein. Protect never hurts there. Uh, just in general, and he goes back in the trend. Now, um, well, you can go into his Moltres here, or you can just knock off or protect again. Yeah, you just protect again. And now, um, he just recovers to scout instead of protecting this time. And then since the Greninja locked into Dark Pulse, now he just goes into his Chansey which can easily eat Dark Pulse. The reason he recovers is just to scout the Greninja set and to see what it locks itself into. Now it's confirmed that the Greninja has Choice Specs, which is good information for value. And yeah, I feel like he can always go Motrith on the Heatran. If, if he must change the Heatran to Toxic, um, yeah, he, he rocks, now he can just defog them away, he subs first, um, that's also a good play because that makes him, when Sidumas has to break the sub, like he has to break the sub now, that makes it so he has to waste 2 PP instead of 1 because of pressure, and well you can still go for the defog, now he has to switch out here um, because he doesn't want this to get knocked off, so he just, just go into Sableye, Sidumas, Sidumas makes a good play reading that in U-turns, but it doesn't really matter because the Avala can just come out on the um, Mawile here, we do see it's a Thunder Punch variant, so he tried to Thunder Punch there to catch the Moltres on the switch, but Avala can can switch into Marwa, like I said earlier, quite easily. We do see no Rocky Helmet, so this pretty much confirms what I was thinking. That it's most likely a Zemo's Avalak, um, with, I guess Ground C. Mm. Like I said, not a fan of that because you have to keep recovering anyway with this, and you want to do passive damage. So yeah, Sidumas is forced to switch here. Um, he can also not go hard into Tran because this could potentially go for Earthquake. But yeah, I assume Value is just gonna recover here. There's no point really of quick. He goes into Torn, even if this went for the Avalanche, Torn can easily eat that up because it's a max HP Torn. And this, I mean, this is actually kind of strong, but Avalanche is um, stronger if you get attacked, right? So um, this has Piss Spur Spit Death and doesn't want to take a Hurricane. So Value is gonna switch out here. Um, I guess into either Clef or Sableye because he doesn't want the Chansey to get knocked off and he doesn't want the Moltres to get knocked off. Those are the main two things. So either Chansey or Either Clef or Sableye is what he's always going to go out into on the Torn. That's how I see it. And he goes Clef there. And now he's just it's just going to be a bit repetitive. He's just always going to go Avalak on Morwell. As you guys can see, Player of does absolutely nothing. He's forced to recover again. And yet the turns are going to repeat again. He's either going to go Clef or Sableye every time. Because um, there's no reason to go Chansey or Motris and let it get knocked. Because Evalet is really important to just um, deal with the special attackers. Well, in this case with Greninja only, there's not really another special attacker that is a threat because Heatran is already dealt with, um, like Moltres plus Sableye deal with that. Um, even though I think he's just gonna always go Moltres on Tram because he wants to keep Sableye healthy because um, sometimes if, Mo if Sableye is at full and can live two hits from Greninja, at least two Dark Pools, I don't know if it lives to Pump, that means he can potentially bring Sableye in, which, um, makes it so Sidumas cannot just click spikes for free with his Greninja and get them up because like the only way Sidumas can put any pressure on value is um, if he gets some hazards up. You guys can see this does absolutely nothing. Um, on the original team that ABR had, the Moral was actually SD, Knockoff, Sucker Punch and Play Rough, so I think he changed it to T-Punch. I don't know if he gave up SD or if he has T-Punch SD right now, but yeah, he's just always gonna switch into either Sableye or Clefable on this no reason to risk anything. I think this time he predicted um, a knockoff, predicting Sidumas to predict the clef, so he went into Sableye, but yeah, he just U-turns again. And now Avalak always comes out of Marwile, always has to recover. Unfortunately, I cannot hover over this to see the PP. And yeah, this time um, he does knock off, which he was eventually gonna get the knockoff on clef because Wellyu kept going clef on this, but it's not bad for Wellyu. Um, I guess he can protect here to stall out the PP, or he can just go for Moonblast. I assume he just... Oh, he goes for Wish instead. So Heatran comes out and he doubles um, into Morwell here. I think he tried to predict the Sableye, because, uh, well, you could have passed the Wish into Sableye since the Sableye was at 72%. Instead, he went into Moltres, which was completely fine. Um, the Sableye might have been in range to die from Heatran's Z-move. I'm going to pause it and calc that real quick. Okay, it was unlikely to kill, but Corkscrew Crash can definitely... It was a roll to kill Sableye. 
uh, Sidumas needed like a high, a really high roll, so it was in Volio's well, favor. But I agree with going um, into Moltres just in case he corks good crashes there. Um, I assume that's still the set. That's a set that ABR had on his team, or even Fiery MZ, because um, ABR loves Modest Heatran, and this I assume this is Modest on this team. But yeah, um, just going Moltres on Tran was always the play, and yeah, if he doubles into Morwell, you also kind of cover that. Now you don't want a flamethrower into the Tran here, so you could probably just go for sub here, or you could switch. He goes for that. Uh, just for sub and um, yeah, Sidumas can't do anything. Like they can't touch e each other, but Mo but Moltres has the pressure ability, which means if Heatran stays in, it c wouldn't just get stalled out of Rocks PP, and Moltres would have more defogs. So he switches. I assume he might just switch back and forth a little bit. Exactly. I agree with what Sidumas is doing because now, um, yeah, well, you cannot keep staying in and wasting sub PP and Roost PP because um, yeah, Sidumas was, was just switching between Torm, which has regen, and uh, Heatran, which is immune to Flamethrower, the only attack that this Moltres has. Yeah, that's um, an example where HP Ground would have been better to have to catch the Heatran. But yeah, like I said, sub helps with the CBT Torm matchup. But yeah, now um, Sableye gets U-turned on again as Morwell is gonna come back out and he recovers. Now he's just gonna go back to Avalok, and he's just forced to recover. This is like rinse and repeat. And I don't, like I said, I cannot hover over this to see the PP. Now, since the Sableye is at full, it's risky for Sidumas to spike here. Um, yeah, the players either Chansey or Sableye here. I'm just gonna calc real quick if Hydro Pump tweet kills. Oh, Hyd Hydro Pump does 49 to 58, so he still doesn't wanna go Sableye. But it, yeah, I assume. I mean, he can also go Budo technically, but I assume he's just gonna go Chansey here. So I guess if Sidumas wants to predict that he can spike, I didn't know Hydro Pump does. Yeah, I mean, I thought it would tweet here, but I wasn't 100% sure. So does he do that? No, he just pumps there. In case, he, uh, well, he wants to break the spike and go um, into his save line. Now, well, you can either pull a double here or you can just seismic toss. Well, actually, he doesn't want a seismic toss because Sidumas is most likely just going to go into his Torn, which is Rocky Helmet and has region. Um, Rocky Helmet would just chip the chance if it S tosses and Tornadus doesn't care about seismic toss because, like I said, it does have regenerator. So Sidumas is definitely going to switch out into the Torn here. Uh, there's no point going more well and let it get chipped because Sidumas has no form of recovery. Like he has no wish pass or anything to get more well back healthy. So definitely has to go into um, the torn here. So well, you can I guess go toxic, go for toxic if he has that, or he can pull a double switch, or he can go for softball. Those are the options. Oh, he just throws up the rocks. Yeah, obviously. Um, I was still thinking that the rocks are on Ferrothon on this team, but since there is a Bulu instead of Ferrothon, obviously the rocks are on this. So that was. Obviously, if that was the fine. That was the play to make. But yeah, like I said, Sidumas was gonna go to his one to his one of his region ones. He went actually Tang instead of Torn, which is also completely fine. And yeah, Sableye um, is the play for value. The only way this Tang can annoy the Sableye is if it has Sludge Bomb, because then it can potentially poison the Sableye. But otherwise, if it's just Giga Drain, Knock of Earthquake, HPI, something like that, then Sableye completely walls it. Um, Sableye does run Spadev. and. It can easily take anything it wants to do unless it has sludge bomb. So I guess since Sidumas has rocks on his side, I assume he might want it to double into Torn as he does double because he wants to defog those away exactly. Because like I said just said a second ago, Sidumas has no way of recovery. Like outside of these two ones, they have region. But if these mons get chipped, the other four, they have no way to get their health back. No leftovers, no wish pass, no healing wish, nothing. So he definitely want to play with no rocks on your side. Otherwise, you're gonna get worn down faster and you're gonna lose faster. But yeah, he was there knowing that he's gonna go for defog, and he also knows he can live any one hit because he's a spadef sable and it's a bulky torn. So now Sidumas can either hurricane or U-turn here. And uh, I assume we just see a knockoff or a recover. Yeah, we just see a knockoff. And the helmet brings him low, but at least he gets rid of the helmet. Now he can recover here, but I don't know if he wants to risk. Like Sidumas is definitely not gonna stay in here because he's low. But um, I, st I still think he doesn't want to risk. Um, hitting himself in confusion here. So I think what he might do is uh, just switch out into like the clef or something like that. But he does, okay, he does stay in to just recover and he does not hit himself. Okay, if he hit himself there, he would have been really low. So I thought he might want to go clef and then try to get the Sableye back healthy later on in the game by doubling Sableye in on either the Torn or on the Tangrowth. He could have still gotten it healthy like that, but yeah, he didn't hit himself, so everything is fine. He always goes this on Morwell, it's just rinse and repeat. And yeah, Sidumas is, I guess, trying to uh, either catch the Moltres, in case well, he wants to predict the player off, or he's trying to paralyze this, is that what I'm thinking? But yeah, he avalanches there, actually predicting the Tornadus, because 
he has been recovering all this time. He also has been... Uh, yeah, the other move that he would potentially click um, to threaten Mola is Earthquake. So Sidemus knows it's unlikely that Avalanche comes out, but he makes a good read there and goes for it. But yeah, um, since Tornadoes is max HP, it can eat it up. And Tornadoes is free to just, um, I guess, U-turn out because nothing has a Rocky Helmet on this team, I'm pretty sure. Um, he can hard switch out if he's freeing a random Rocky Helmet as he does just hard switch out. He Earthquake's there, which... Um, he knew he knew that he would not hurricane, because if he hurricanes there, his tornadoes would go down to the burn. And I think what did he predict there? Let me pause it. Yeah, I think he made it. Might have predicted Sidumas to go into more while because um, he could have gone Sableye there in case, um, like just in case Sidumas stays into hurricane, Sableye or Clef would have been the play, and more would have covered both. So I think Earthquake was to try and catch the more while. I mean, it would have also caught the Heatran. And it would have also worked versus Greninja because it would have done like good chip versus Gren. And like I said, he has no recovery. So now he obviously has to go into his Sableye. Like he just doesn't want anything to get knocked off. Um, I guess Clef is already knocked, but Sableye is always the play here. And unless this has Sludge Bomb, like I said, it cannot do anything to Sableye. Sableye is just free to click knock off here as um, Torn is able to eat it up since Torn lost the item already. Knockoff's base power is now lower. But he is obviously just going to hard switch out or U turn here. Probably hard switch, yeah. Just in case anything has Rocky Helmet and he doesn't know that yet. Um, like random Helmet type of Bulu. It's super unlikely, but there's just no reason to risk it. So now he can just protect to scout what this locks into. Or he goes hard chance, he actually, okay. And yeah, on Heatran he can always go Moltres and this is just gonna repeat. Um, I'm gonna not explain too much if the turns are just repetitive. Subs up. Um, he can just Roost or Defog here. He Defogs. And now actually this is... Um, kind of risky to stay in with the Moltres. Like, he can stay in and go for Roost, yes. Um, as we can see, Sidomas knows he's probably gonna stay in, so he goes for Spike. Um, but yeah, locking into Spike doesn't do anything for Sidomas, he's just gonna defog it away. And yeah, it is a bad matchup for Sidomas, not gonna lie. I don't wanna, like, talk him, talk down on him or anything. But yeah, pretty much what I was gonna say is, uh, I ran the Kalk on this specific turn, and I saw he was at 48%, I think. Or maybe at 50... F and, like, Water Shuriken, he it needs two hits to break the sub. And then it needs, um, it does around 20. So if, if he water shurikens right here and he gets 5 hits, he would have actually killed the Moltres, but he needed 5 hits and then he would have gotten Ash form. And well, he would have lost Moltres and Heatran would have become a huge, huge problem because it can potentially bop Sableye with the Corkscrew Crash, um, bring Chansey low with Magma Storm. Would have been even better, like I said, at Team Preview, I think I did say that. I don't know if I did, but if Heatran has Z-Move plus Wish Path, it's um, a really big problem for teams like this if they don't have Moltres, but that's why Moltres is used. And just because of pressure also, which helps PP stalling. But yeah, he did, like, if you guys could see, he went for spikes. Um, so, well, he was free to just go for Devog again here, because he knows it's locked in. And so he goes on the Zyra, which is banned. Um, he can just flamethrower and he's faster. Yeah, this is a really fast Moltres. I think it runs speed to outspeed Excadrills. And now he knows it's locked into Thousand Arrows, which means he can go into his Bulu, he can go into his Avalak, or he can go into his Clef, but he's mostly gonna go Bulu here. Um, there's no reason to go Avalak on this, because you wanna always go Avalak on Morwal, and you don't wanna waste to recover for no reason, so you just, you don't wanna go uh, Avalak on this. Oh, he does go, okay. I thought you didn't wanna, because he could've also gone Bulu, because it's like... Well, I guess... Um, it wasn't 100% confirmed just yet that the Zygarde is banded. So I guess he was, in case the Zygarde was a different set and not banded, he didn't want to go Bulu. Maybe that's because he didn't go Bulu, but I still would have gone Avalok. I guess I still would have gone Bulu, most likely. Um, but yeah, Avalok was also a fine play. I just didn't want, like, if I'm well here, I just don't want to waste Recover PP. I don't want to use too many Recover PP with Avalok because you want all the Recover PP you can have to keep switching into more while. But you know, um,. And going into Chansey is actually completely fine for him. Um, he doesn't even have to risk going Sableye. Like I said earlier, having Sableye at full makes it so Sidumas is not that free to spike and he kind of wants to pump to catch that. But even if Sidumas spikes on the Chansey, it's completely fine for value um, because he can then next turn just double into um, the Moltres because he scouted for the Greninja being specs already um, from the damage earlier. He knows it's choice specs, so if this ever goes for spikes on Chansey, he can just double the Moltres. And Sidemus doesn't even have a great double that prevents the Moltres. Like, outside of Greninja, I guess he could double to Zygarde to threaten the Moltres. But other than that, maybe Moltres, but... Uh, maybe Torn, but other than that, he doesn't have a good double that actually threatens the Moltres. So, like, 
if, if there's ever spikes, he can just double the Moltres and defog anyway. But yeah, now he's obviously free to softball. No reason to not softball. You want to keep this healthy to switch into Greninja. And now he can just go back Avalak. And um, he does just T-Punch. He's going to recover here, obviously, because he's getting quite low. Now he can just always go back Chansey. There's, like, he could go, yeah, he could go Sableye and extra flex, but there's no reason to do that. Um, because Sableye being healthy means it can switch into Tangrowth and nothing else has to get knocked off and there's no reason to like waste recover on Sableye to let it get low unnecessary and also it switches into uh, the Torn um, even though ev like he has a lot of monsters that switch into Torn but he doesn't want anything to get knocked like he already let Clef get knocked but he doesn't want the other monsters to get knocked now um, what happens I'm behind he went Zygarde on the soft board right oh wait I'm actually thrown off because I was talking about something else no, no, he went Zygarde on just Chansey's Estos on rocks, on rocks. Okay, I'm getting at rocks is actually fine for him because he can get some little, a little bit of chip, but sooner or later he's gonna defog again because you just don't want any hazards of your, on your side when you use stall because you're switching around quite a lot. But yeah, now um, he doubles into Tangros here, anticipating, um, I guess, the Avalak to come out maybe as he goes into Bulu there. Um, yeah, this time he goes Bull on Zyga, which I think is what, like I said, would have done earlier. Now, um, if he has... The Spike actually doesn't do anything to him, right? Because he has leftovers, I assume, plus Grassy Terrain just gives him back to full. Now he can just go back into Sableye here. Um, like I said, no reason to let the Bulu get knocked off or anything else get knocked off. And he gets the crit there. Um, now we could just recover or knock off here. Just, just recover and play it extra safe. Now he's free to click knock off. He doesn't really want to click will o -Wisp because Tren is there. Grassy Tren helps Sidomas a little bit. Um, get passive recovery on Tren because it doesn't have leftovers. Now, well, is free to go into Moltres here. He doesn't have to waste any PP. He predicts that and goes into Zygarde, but if he... Oh, wow, he actually kn knocks there, yeah. So, well, you makes a read there. Um, to be fair, like, that was, like, risk-free for well, you. The worst that would have happened that turn is... Like, if Sidomas went for Magma Storm that turn... Um, Sable, I would have still lived it, and Grassy Terrain helps him a little bit counteracting the secondary effect. Like, let's say this went for Magma Storm, then the next turn, um, well, you could have just gone into Moltres, uh, because he doesn't want to let this die to a Z move, obviously, the next turn. So it was still a fine play, and in case Sidumas, um just made it some sort of double or went for off power, which doesn't do much to Sableye, knockoff was also completely fine, so he knocks off the band, gets some chip on this, and now... He can just go into one of these three. Um, with the spike up and Clef being chipped, he doesn't want to go Clef. He's going to go to one of these two, exactly. Uh, doubles into Greninja there, predicting the Avalak to come out or the Clef. Probably Avalak, yeah. And now, um, Bellio is free to go back into Chansey here. There's no reason to risk the Greninja having Gunk Shot. Oh, he does actually risk... Well, I guess the Greninja already revealed... Yeah, yeah, my bad. He, he, knew, the Grin he knew the Greninja had Pump. Dark Pulse and Spikes already revealed. I don't think it revealed Water Shuriken yet, but it's really obvious that the last move has to be Water Shuriken. So my bad. No reason to scout for Gunk Shot. Um, yeah, he went for Horn Leech there just to get damage in case Smallwell come out. Came, I think I would have potentially gone for Super Power there. Because it would have hit the other ones harder that can come in. But yeah, that was also completely fine. Like, well, you does not have to make plays. He does have matchup. He can play safe. Now he can just go into Moltres. Uh, Moltres also doesn't take any damage, and um, yeah, he wastes two Magma Storm PP, and eventually Sidomas is gonna get rocks up, uh, which will force Wellyu to defog. Now he's just forced to defog, but he doesn't care, and he still got something out of the rocks, like some of Sidomas mons got chipped down. Now he can just roost here because I think even if Shuriken gets five hits, there's no way it will kill the Moltres from this range. Yeah, even if it got five, it would not have killed. And I guess if he uh, he gets a burn there, which just speeds up the game a bit. I mean, this game is pretty much over unless something happens and he pulls up with some tech or he gets some wild, crazy hacks. But yeah, if, if he got 5 hits and he crit every Shuriken, may this could have actually killed, I guess, but who is going to get that lucky? Like, the chance to crit is, I think, 4% in Ultra Sun and Moon. They lowered it, right? But yeah, now, um, this is locked into Shuriken, so he's obviously going to switch into either the Bulu or the Chansey here. No reason to stay in, and Sidumas is probably going to pull a double, predicting. Um, yeah, I guess double into Marwell here will catch one of these two. Yeah, does double into mobile exactly, and now um, just back into Avalak, rinse and repeat, we had this already. Yeah, I, I, I actually didn't want this video to go this long, as he predicts him to go on a Torn there, but he just T-punches again. 
and catches him, but now he can just recover. As he's just trying to get the para, I think. Because if he gets the para, he can potentially hex this down. Gets the play right there, gets Heatran in on, on another avalanche. And yeah, he always goes Moltres on Tran. If Rocks go up, he Fox. Storm, I think, only has like 4 BP left now because of pressure. He's free to go for sub here. Now he can just Roost and also see what Zyga locks itself into. Pressure makes it so Zyga loses 2. Um, thousand arrows in this case, and now you can just switch out. Um, I would have personally gone. I guess you don't. Hmm. It's not Bennett anymore. I forgot about that. Thousand arrows only did 18. But yeah, going this is also fine. But like I said earlier, I would be a bit more careful with the recover BP. I would mostly bring this in on more while. So I would have maybe gone the Bulu there. I'm pretty sure he has heal build on Clef to get rid of the glare anyway. Yeah, this is glare. Um, thousand arrows E speed. I don't remember the last move on this. So I got fed though. the iron tail because I think glare is usually used over outrage and not over iron tail I think iron tails actually still used sometimes on band yeah and I see Duma has to switch out here I guess into tangrowth maybe goes hard Greninja on avalanche but yeah he's just free to go chancy every time like I said earlier now if spikes go up he can just double back into Moltres he goes out, gets up his rocks okay actually goes hard more while there and now he's forced to flamethrower because of the SD. Um, but if he just flamethrows here, he gets good chip on the Zygar. And yeah, since he had rocks up, yeah, I guess it was a good play getting up rocks instead of just fogging. Like, just fogging would have worked in my opinion as well. But having up rocks makes it so Sidumas wants to get chip more and more and more. Sidumas has no recovery, I already explained this. That is laughable damage. And he probably has some fist death investment on this maybe as well. So even if this has Iron Tail, which I'm pretty sure it doesn't have, could probably live one of those. Now he's just gonna Horn Leech here, I guess, to get some chip. But I guess he's not gonna get any chip because he's getting para. Now Avalok can come back out. Oh, he goes Moltres there. Okay, okay, okay. So, it, uh, okay, I see, I see. The reason why he's not going Avalok anymore is because he is paralyzed. And if the mobile SDs up and then play roughs and then the Avalok gets paralyzed, then it's actually a problem for Will you because you would lose the Avalok. So I guess he's trying. He's gonna try to get a heal bell off before he brings Avalak in. So that's why he goes Moltres, because Moltres can actually live a Thunder Punch. I'm gonna run the Calc real quick. I assume it is like 60-ish, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pause it while I run the Calc. Yeah, T Punch actually does a lot, but it doesn't kill. It does 84 to 99 if I Calc this correct. Um, which means Moltres can live Thunder Punch, and then it can roost the next turn, which means Thunder Punch does less. And player would also only do um, 37 to 44, so you could just roost it off. So going Moltres is a completely fine play. But yeah, since he SD, he's kind of forced to flamethrower, which he does just do. And now he's either gonna sub down here, which yeah, he did because he cannot switch out. Because if he switches out, and Sidumas goes for a fire move, like everything is getting destroyed. So just subs the correct play. And now he can just defog, uh, make sure because like Sidumas getting up rocks just means well, you has to fog. But yeah, Flash can there confirms that it's probably the Coxcrew crash. Madness Storm, Earth Power, and Rocks. Um, yeah, does not have Taunt, but Coxco Crash deals with Clef already. Morwell breaks Clef. Glare cripples Clef, so this team is fine versus Clef. And Torn knocks off the lefties. So does Tang. So he just defoxy again as Sidemus uses this to get in his Zygarde. Now he can just flamethrower to get some chip. Oh, actually, hard switch. I agree. Okay, okay, I agree with that play. Because if he flamethrowers there, and Sidemus actually went back in the trend to break the flamethrower, because I think he's trying to stall this out of flamethrowers. Because if he stalls this out of flamethrowers, um, Morwell walls this and can actually SD on this. And then if he parallel hexes down the Avalanche, Morwell can win. But yeah, um, that's why it was the correct play to not go for flamethrower right here and just hard switch into something that can deal with the, with the Zygarde. So yeah. Completely agree with how he's playing this. Now always Moltres, always Defog when rocks go up. Now always Chansey. Um, like I said earlier, yeah, I mean Sableye like, is kind of an option, but it's mainly the... Having Sableye at full, I think I already said it, it's mainly to scare him to not go for spikes. Like, you should still not bring Sableye in. But yeah, now um, he could either rocks or he could double back. Like, double back into Moltres here is definitely a play. Because uh, it covers the Morwell and also... Like, if Greninja stays in, it's locked in. So he does just make that double. Now, um, I think he's just gonna defog. Because even if the mo um, mobile goes for T Punch, he can just roost next turn. And yeah, since he's parallel on Avalok, he doesn't wanna play around with that. So he's gonna wish here, but he has to hard switch. Because if he protects on an SD, he can be in a bad position. And now he flames out and he catches him. And I think that's pretty much game over, and Sidumas forfeits here. So basically, Sidumas tried to catch him there, because earlier. Uh, well, you already doubled out once. Well, it wasn't versus the Morwell, but he doubled out once. 
Um, I'm not sure exactly what he predicted there, but he predicted some sort of double. Um, it would be good to know how many flamethrower PP the Moltres has left, because if the Moltres is low on flamethrower PP, it would make complete sense um, for um, for Sidumas to predict that, because like well, you has to be really careful with his flamethrower PPs if they're low, because if this runs out of flamethrower, otherwise Morwell just SDs on it and walls it, because this doesn't have wisp, it only has flamethrower boost sub defog, right? So maybe he just predicted him since he maybe only has like three or four flamethrowers left. I don't know exactly. He predicted him to not go for it, but I think he had to go for it right there. So Sidumas had to m maybe try to keep doing that and run this out of flamethrower somehow. But I'm not gonna attack him or anything. I think he played. He tried. Like it was a tough matchup. That's pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button if you want to see more. And like I said, every other game will be uh, live recorded with the smokers chat at the side just for this one. It's uh, replay. Uh, it still was longer than I wanted it to be. I wanted this to keep be around 20 minutes, but of course it had to go in the 30 minute range. But yeah, have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys next time.